Hey Bigger Pockets, it's Matt, and today we're going to talk about the most common calls that we get from tenants. And so, a lot of people that are looking to get into property management or looking to get into landlording in general want to know what are these tenants going to call us about? What are people going to want to have done to their properties and what's most common? Well, we've been managing properties for 11 years now, um, but I needed to call in some backup for this one to answer this one for you. So, I'm calling in our guy Joshua. This is Joshua. He works for the DeRosa Group and he is the property manager for all the assets that we have here in New Jersey and some of the stuff in Pennsylvania. So Joshua, the folks on Bigger Pockets want to know what is it just what do tenants call about most commonly? Joshua's man in the phones. He's the guy that's taken that call from the tenants. He's been doing it for a while now. So let's go. I know uh, what, what, what are you seeing out there? Well, okay. you know, um, we had a brief conversation about this and we, we thought about some of the, the things that come in as calls and we have a list here. So. Yeah. Um, Let's talk it out. What do you got? What's first, the first? First thing that comes out. And this is, is in no particular order, guys, of the most common that you get, but these are the most prevalent in all of them. So what do you yeah. got? First thing that stands out is uh, sometimes you have the tenants that call for their neighbors. Yeah. Oftentimes, they, it may be a neighbor that's just too loud. And this is a multifamily property. Right, multifamily. Right? So yeah. They're calling yeah. to say, that guy upstairs with those kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It could be loud. You know, noise, uh, or yep. it could be just bad hygiene, bad, you know, smell. And Not taking the trash out. Yeah. Right. So, um, I guess. So, what do we do about yeah, it? What solutions. do we do when we get that call? You know, uh, we encourage community and our multifamilies is one of the things that we really try to kind of put into our uh, tenants' mind. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, the encouragement there is basically trying to get the tenant to, if they feel comfortable, to have that conversation first with their neighbor, yep. and and especially if it's something that's just noise, um, and maybe they can work it out together. Yeah. Um, and a duplex sometimes that's a little easier because mm -hmm. they've already built that relationship. Um, mm -hmm. In a 19 unit building, sometimes that conversation, you know. Yeah. There's a little difficulty there. It depends, and also we've sent letters in the past if it's clear right. the tenant right. that's being complained about is a habitual person or if they're just living like pig pen yeah. in there and the other yeah. tenants are complaining about it, we can send letters, we can go out and do a field inspection. But the first angle of attack is encourage, encourage the tenants to be a part of a community and if there is something going on that's noise or whatever, especially if it's noise, go knock on the tenant on the neighbor's door and remind them that you know maybe you have a different schedule than they do. And we'll, and we'll get involved, but the last thing we want to do is to get so engrossed in this where the tenants come to us with everything. You want to empower them a bit to deal with some of these issues on their own, but if it's clear that a tenant is violating the lease, then right, right. then we deal with it with a letter. Because yeah. you gotta call them out for you've broken the lease by this by this section here, just so you know we're aware of it. Yeah, I would so. say use discretion too because sometimes you you I think the landlord will get a better grip if the neighbors are able to diplomatically hold this conversation together. Yeah. If it's something that's just gonna get out of control and, and yeah. break the community, I think then yeah. you know some of those other methods Matt just laid out would be. What else you got? So uh, the other thing is pest. Pests. Not pesty neighbors, but pests. <laughs> like what kind of pests you talking about? Uh, it could be roaches, it could be uh, mice, it could be yeah. um, sometimes we hope not, but bed bugs. Ants, 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 ants yeah. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, well, you know, if you have an inside guy that works for the company, a maintenance crew, uh, oftentimes they're the first round of uh, defense for it, or something like that. Well, I think what the first round of defense is yeah. really, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our lease says that oh, the property right, 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 was given right. to you without pests, and we expect you to keep it that way. Right. So that means that we made sure there's no pests in the property, we exterminated it if it needed to be, and, and here you go. Now, if it's a multifamily building, right. they, a lot of this goes on, well, that's coming from next door, that's coming from outside, or whatever it is. Um, so for multifamily larger than, say, three or four units, we end up having the property sprayed once a quarter anyway. But, um, right. but, what, but you, know, you were saying that if, uh, if it's clear that it's not a tenant violation, right. just living... Right. Living poorly in there, what do we do? We yeah, send our so, inside guy, or yeah, yeah, we we will send our guy out there, and oftentimes they'll vet it out too and see mm -hmm. where it's sourcing from. If bed bugs is one of those things, yep. like if it's coming from the, the tenant, then we expect some responsibility on the tenant side mm -hmm. uh, to take care of it. But um, let's say it's something out of control, um, and it's just getting to a volume where we need to pull in a, a, a contractor to come in, like a company. We'll hire in a, a company, and I won't really name out any of the no. companies, but. 
but you know. But we'll yeah. address it and build a tenant back too. Like right. we don't just say, okay, right. just call your own, call your own pest control company tenant. No, we will send in the, uh, one of our vendors and we will send the tenant an invoice for that work. Right. And we can get a good, pretty good deal for the work done. So it's actually saving the tenant money directly through our relationships, but that's how we typically deal with it. So what else you got on the list? Okay, so the next thing is plumbing. Plumbing. What does that mean? There's a lot of different uh, plumbing. Yeah, there is. It can be anything from, you know, very regular maintenance, like, you know, a toilet clog, uh, maybe a, a, a faucet. That's really common, toilet that clog. Is, yeah, yeah, it's very common. Or it can be something extreme, you know, like a, a flood in the basement because maybe a pipe broke. And very common. Those are the, the scary calls because then you got problems yeah. you got. And then you got a source where it's coming from. Um, For uh, toilet clogs, guys, you want to make sure there's sometimes we own buildings that have large trees in front of them, so you end up getting tree roots in the tree line and in, in the sewer line. Uh, that you know, it's just part of owning a property with a tree. You can take the tree down if you want, um, but th there's other reasons why you might want to keep the tree. So um, there's also we've had tenants flush full out full diapers down the drain. Yeah. All kinds of things that aren't supposed to go down the drain uh, get flushed down the drain um, and stuff like that. So if you always want to ask whoever remediates the toilet clog what they found that was clogging the drain. And then if, if, uh, if it's clear in your lease that the tenant can't flush certain things down the drain, again, a lot of this is actually flowing back in the lease now that I think about yeah. it, right? So uh, you wanna make it clear in your lease that the tenant can only flush certain things down the drain, and if they don't, then they're responsible for that uh, yeah. that sewage clear out, right? As much as you wanna think they're gonna, they, they should know these things, it's a conversation to have with the yeah. tenants and stuff. We've like had that, so. toys and all kinds of other stuff flushed down the drain yeah. and stuff like well, that. Well, kids, they, they, sometimes kids just don't know. Yeah, and, and, what are you gonna know. do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they can't pay the bill either. It's all the dad has to pay right, the bill, right. right? So, okay, what else you got? Okay, uh, we also have uh, temperature as an issue. Yeah, right? temperature uh, control. In either direction, hot or cold. Um, you know, everyone has different temperaments when it comes to temperature. It's cold in and here, it's hot exactly. in here. Exactly. Right. And so, uh, you know, depending on what the, the issue is and how, I, I think for me, I, one of the things that's been very successful for us, we'll get our, our maintenance guy. Our technician out there who's who can go out there and sometimes by law things are regulated the way it's supposed to and it's just a tenant that just wants it to feel like a sauna in a place that's a rainy where we rainy. are here in new jersey what's the temperature it's supposed to be 68 um, 68 degrees that's that's his nighttime. most used yeah 68 during the day 65 at night i walked into one tenant's property and it was a multifamily, and he had the heat set up to 82 degrees. And I was like, what are you doing? It's 82 degrees in here. The guy says to me, I've got kids. Yeah. Like, you got kids? You know, what are you trying to cook them? Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, geez. You know, but anyway, and it's just, tenants have different regulations with regards to heat. And so you've got to be, mind that. And we even put thermostats, if we're paying for the heat, we put thermostats that lock out at 70 degrees because that's the law that we have to provide into the unit. And, you know, a, a lot of our units also have tenant paid heat, so they can set up whatever they want. Um, so a lot of times the temperature call is because their heater's malfunctioning. Right now, we happen to be in the middle of November, so a lot of the units that are supposed to be functioning, they were preventative maintenance and, and whatnot, are just uh, having a problem getting online, and so we've had a few no heat calls, right? It happens. Yeah, it happens. Even though we take good care of our stuff and we maintain it in the off season, it happens. So this is kind of the time of year where these things start showing up. And of course, in the summertime, yeah. you, the units where we provide air conditioning, uh, where there is an air conditioner in the unit, you know, it's too hot, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know? I mean, this goes into maybe another conversation for another video about preventative maintenance. It's something yeah. That, you know, um, you got to maintain that stuff. But it's very, it's an urgent, the heat temperature control becomes an urgent matter in the winter time because that is, becomes a life safety issue. So my recommendation is if you guys are getting into the rental or small multi-business, get yourself a good heating guy lined up. I don't care if it's July. Actually, July is probably a better time to call the guy because if you call him right now and say, I have a heat issue and I've never done business with you guys ever before, we've been told by people, no, I'm sorry, we're not taking any more clients. And so, sometimes the rates will... Go yeah, all of a sudden, like, right. So negotiate, money, yeah. negotiate the rate in July for doing heating repairs in November. So. Right, right. What else you got? Okay, so uh, the roof. Uh, yeah. That's an issue. That a lot of roofs leaking. So, right, it could be leaks. Uh, that's, a, that's really a heavy one right there. Um, yeah. Or it could be uh, different parts falling off the roof for some odd reason, you know, depending on the kind of roof. The flashing coming off right. or something like right. that. We just had a big windstorm last week. Uh, and, you know, knock on wood, we didn't have any issues. Yeah. but. Uh, we've had that happen during big windstorms and stuff. So yeah, roof leaks are very common, especially little pinhole nuisance drippy leaks that you got to do some due diligence to find when they show up. So yeah, what else? Okay, and then uh, the other thing is appliances that they yeah. Have.
Yeah. Like yeah. what? Like what's oh, the refrigerators, yeah. stoves, um, sometimes I guess uh, dishwashers. Most commonly, yeah. It's it's either the fridge or the uh, yeah. dish or the washing machine. We don't have that many yeah. dishwashers, but the refrigerator. And the refrigerator is the most important one because there's food in there and everything like that. I mean, you know, we've had stoves malfunction where one or two of uh, the burners on the stove yeah. didn't work. Well, you know, we can work around that, but there's an urgency around a malfunctioning refrigerator, obviously washer, dryer, all these things are a pain in the butt if they stop working. But, um, you know, you need to get yourself a good appliance repairman. Again, our technician knows how to repair some appliances. Um, that is a good first round of defense. But if in your market, if you guys are looking to, to get into this business, find a good appliance repair guy. They're not that common, but if you can find one that's good mm -hmm. and isn't going to just come and look at it and charge it and say that needs to be replaced, um, you know they're, they're worth their weight in gold, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you save a lot of money if you're able to repair some of the appliances. But uh, uh, I think also looking at the lease and what you like when it comes to washers and dryers, if mm -hmm. that's a part of the promise to the tenant, because you know they may go in and it's just. Yeah, maybe it's best to just get the the washer and dryer out. If you're not gonna. Yeah, supply some landlords don't include them. You can just provide the provide the hookups, and the tenants provide their own washer dryer that can take it off your plate. Um, so so listen, guys. The most important thing for all of these things is quick response time. And so uh, these are the issues that we see. Any anything else come up off the top of your head? Last one. Oh, last, last one. one. Oh, yeah. I was about one to take more. it home. I'm about to take it home. Last one. one. More. Yeah. It's it's grounds and a multi-family. Yeah. Um, grounds is something that sometimes can be overlooked because we're focusing on some of the other items on the list. And that can be grass cutting, yeah. uh, time response for snow removal. Why on a single uh, family home should we worry about that? Uh, well, you know, oftentimes that falls on a tenant's responsibility right. to take care of. Uh, it says that grounds, in our what? Our, our lease. Our, our yeah, lease so. calls for that. There you go. It's a lot of this goes back to leasing. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Dumpsters, another one. If you have a, a apartment complex or a parking lot of some sort, uh, sometimes just overflows, you know, or the tenant next door is not putting the. He's not putting the garbage correctly in the dumpster, so we could yeah. do all Raccoons, you never know. Oh, oh. we've had that. Yeah, yeah so, man. you know, grounds is something that we get heavy calls for, and depending on your arrangement, you can call other companies. Other that's companies on your subcontractor. That's unless you're cutting the yeah. grass yourself. That's, you know, whoever's cutting the grass for you, whoever's shoveling the snow for you, whoever's taking that dumpster away, if it's a multifamily, you know, that's a call to those companies. And your tenants are really looking out for you on your side of to say, hey, the guy you hired isn't doing his job. Right. Just so you know. Um, then, for, especially for snow removal, snow removal, you know, there's slip and falls on ice and stuff like that. That's you know, you hear horror stories about that. Unfortunately, we've had horror stories uh, happen to us for people that slipped and fell on ice um, yeah. for the snow removal not happening in a timely manner. So you know, yeah, we we typically ask for before and after pictures too. I think that goes a long yeah. way with some of these guys that are right. coming in and do the job. We make these so guys that are cutting the grass shoot me a picture. Yeah, shoot me a picture. Yeah. yeah, so we have proof. You know, so, not that we don't trust them, but you know, it helps. Hey, it goes for the, it's for the file, you tell yeah. them, right? So, um, so uh, that's it, guys. These are, these are the issues that we see. I'd like for you to just leave some comments down below for stuff that I might have missed. Maybe we intentionally left one out. Uh, it's, a, it's a common call uh, that you get from tenants. So make some comments on what you, issues that you've received from calls from tenants and what the solution that you have to those kinds of things are. Um, and again, the most important thing that I said before was um, it's about response time to this because regardless of what the issue is, it's your ability to have the team in place behind you and the, um, the subcontractors or the solutions, uh, do you know what to do in the protocol? Like if the tenant calls with this, this is what I do. Uh, so you can very quickly respond and you know keep your tenants happy. So um, again, guys, leave some comments. We'll get some chatter going. Thank you so, so much for watching and have a great profitable week.